WMC Memphis, WMFS HD2 Bartlett, Memphis. Part of the Memphis Sports Network with 92.9 FM ESPN. ESPN 790 AM. Watch the sun rise, new days dawning, and it's calling you and me. Where the mighty Mississippi flows by Memphis, Tennessee. We've got woodlands, fields, and water. Hey, there is no better way. You can find Saturday morning. Welcome to another edition of the award-winning Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 AM. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Gaston's White River Resort, Sportsman's Warehouse, and Barton Power Sports. Now, here's your host, Larry Ray. Hey, good Saturday morning. Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray. Boy, we've had a lot of fun today. And Oh, I did. I said, uh. I've been trying to cut back on us on this show because somebody says I sound like the, the bulldog at Georgia, Ugga. Ugga, Ugga. Ugga, Ugga, Ugga. Hey, this is our segment that we've been waiting for. It's only on the fifth Saturday of each month. This being the last, it's April the 30th. Tomorrow is May 1st, May Day tomorrow. So if anybody's in trouble, be sure and call May Day. May Day. It's May Day tomorrow, <laughs> May the 1st. And, of course, right after today's show, I'm heading over to East uh, Middle Tennessee to Gallatin for the Tennessee Outdoor Writers Conference. And the banquet is tonight. I hope that it's a successful banquet. Uh, I hope the weather uh, cooperates and everything. But this is when we bring Charlie Covington, retired chaplain from Baptist Hospital. After uh, 742 years, he he was over Methuselah when Methuselah passed. Yeah, Geritol helps a lot. Geritol helps. That's a word we have never used in 16 years on the air. Geritol has now <laughs> coming out of Charlie's mouth. And so uh, Guy Trebel is in here just because he wants to hear Charlie's poem. And you do, too, of course. Yes, Jane. I do. Yeah, I and Charlie, has, uh, he has kind of teased us a little bit about this. This is about fishing, about somebody's seat. And so uh, Charlie Covington, we're going to bring him right in. We're the only outdoor radio show that has a, their own poet laureate. And Charlie Covington, what have you got for us today? Okay. Well, you know, when you think about a modern-day bass fishing boat, yeah, they're really nice. The seating is plush. I mean, they're very comfortable. Yes. You can kick back and take a nap if you want to. But as you listen, Not to, driving. As you listen to this poem, uh, picture in your mind a traditional fishing boat, either aluminum or wood, one that just has three seats. Okay. And picture three men in the boat. This is called Carefully Pick Your Seat. When you go a-fishing, you really should take note. Try to avoid sitting in the middle of the boat. Ask to run the motor or else to sit up front, especially if you do not want to actually bear the brunt. Think about your placement when out on the lake and of the accidental trouble your buddies might make. An overhead cast may require just a little tack, but a sidearm cast may slam you in the back. Once when fishing with my brother and a friend of his, I was sitting in the middle just minding my own biz. He aimed for a cypress stump with his eye so keen, but he caught me on the back with his lucky 13. I felt a slap and sting of those two treble hooks. Then I made a grimace that changed my facial looks. He wiped the area well with an alcohol prep pad and carefully removed them, which wasn't all that bad. 
Those puncture wounds did heal, and in a day or two, but the spot was clearly visible, colored black and blue. Now, even in the happy times, like on a crappie binge, your buddy's sidearm cast can bring to you a cringe. Let's say you're in the middle, your buddy's in the bow, but all his interruptions are about to cause a row. He's calling for a minna, but you are catching fish. You're wanting him to stifle, if you could have your wish. Well, in the kindness of your heart, a minnow comes his way, along with crickets and the worms, as well as time of day. You are there to fish, but he just wants to piddle. You're in an awful spot when you're sitting in the middle. Would you pass along the chips, then pass to me a Coke? All this endless passing was about to get my goat. Why can't he have his stash and in an endless supply? No, you're in the middle, and on you he must rely. Could you pass another soda? They're in the red ice chest. My throat is really dry, and I'm about to make my nest. You offer to trade places. In fact, you offer twice. The next time that you offer, your tone won't be so nice. With all these needs to meet, now what is your take? You're tempted mighty strong to just toss him in the lake. Who said fishing is relaxing, promotes a peace and quiet? But if your buddy's needy, he just could start a riot. The next time you go fishing and have your choice of seats, sit up in the bow and less bother you might meet. Simply plan ahead and have all your bait at hand and leave that third fisherman way back up on the land. Oh, Very good. I like right. that. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> who was not... Who that, hadn't had that experience? That's right. I mean, who hadn't been in the middle of the boat? You know it? Yeah, yeah. And that's where you end up. And, uh, of course, when I went trout fishing with Charlie, he didn't mind being in the middle of the boat because the guide was right behind him, right? Right. That's one of the times that the middle of the boat was okay. It was great. It was great, wasn't it? And I was up in the front, and luckily there was low water, so I didn't have to put the anchor out. And we did overhand cast. We did overhand cast, yeah. and I didn't hook you, did I? No. No, I've done that before. Not to Charlie <laughs> or anything like that. But uh, All right, so Charlie, great uh, poem. That'll be on lroutdoors.com. We'll get that posted. And, uh, Charlie, that's, uh, you got to write. How did you get into that? How did you, uh, when did you start writing poetry? Mm, I, college, high school? Well, I think the first poem I wrote was to a girlfriend, but that was like in 1962. Uh, not, not, to, not to Betty? This wasn't, no, I'm sorry to say it wasn't. Have you ever written a poem for Betty? Oh, yeah, I sure have. Okay, I have, and you've got a book, right? Did you put a book I out? Did, yeah. Uh, and what was it entitled? It's called Down to Earth with Thoughts Above. It is. Uh-huh. And, uh, it, it, and you can go to lroutdoors.com, send us a, a, a message, and if you want to get a copy of that book, We'll see if we can find one for you. Sure will. Because it's got some great illustrations in it. I have a copy of Charlie's uh, book of poetry. And these are things that, that, that really just come to you, don't you? Yeah. Uh, if somebody comes up to me and says, hey, Charlie, would you sit down and write a poem about da 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 Yeah. I can't do that. I have to kind of mull over <laughs> the idea for a day or two and let something gel in my mind. Uh-huh. And then it, it flows. If I sit down and try to force something... It's going to read that way. It's going to read awkward. I think that's one of your best right there. I mean, because to me, uh, everybody's been in the middle of the boat. And I I can still see my mother-in-law, my mother, uh, uh, falling out of the boat at Lake Conway. (laughs) And and my mother had a lawn chair in the front part of the boat. And she went in with with a lawn chair. Oh, yeah, I can see that. I I think my mother-in-law was in the middle of the boat. And she went in, too. And we discovered that they were in about... uh, Four feet of water, but about uh, 10 feet away, they would have been in about 40 feet of water or something like that. And my mother-in-law was just standing there with her head in the water, not realizing she could stand up and be out of the water. (laughs) And my mother went in with the lawn chair and her together. And the lawn chair went just, they just tipped back over. And uh, and, and my wife, it was quite a scene, but uh, middle of the boat. uh, Shame you didn't get that on film. Uh, we didn't have film back in those days. We didn't think about cameras. Of course, we didn't. You know, I mean, we had a, a phone in our shoe like Maxwell Smart. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know how we survive. Oh, I know it. In today's time. I watch all uh, these old black and white movies. I got to find a phone. We got to call. 
Yeah. Just think they had a phone a, in their pocket. A phone can... booth or anything, or the yeah. dial phone. Even, Santa, even Superman had to find a phone booth. He did. Yeah. He? That's, I hadn't thought about that. If he, yeah. hadn't, he wouldn't have any place to dress. Yeah, nowhere now. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Charlie Covington. Thank you. That was really good. It was good, Charlie. And, and I know, uh, do we have any courses going on now? Yeah, I got some set up at uh, Independent Prayers coming up, uh, it'd be in August. In August. And, uh, of course, now TWR has got a uh, Hunter Ed Challenge coming up. I know you're going to talk about that on the next show. Yeah, we're going to talk about that next Saturday. And also um, the YEC. T- uh, y- TWR has a thing called Toys, Tennessee Outdoor Youth Summit. And you've been to that. Oh, I love it. If, if you got any kids, you need to get on the Internet, look up TennesseeWildlife.org. Yeah, TNWildlife.org. And look up Toys, Tennessee Outdoor uh, Something about Tennessee youth. Out, uh, some, outdoor youth or yeah, something. Yeah, thank, thank yeah, you. Tennessee Outdoor Youth. Summit. Yeah, yeah Summit. And you have been to those. Oh, it's super. It's been a whole week, and they stay in a the hotel. They get to do all kind of activities, all kind of shooting events, ATVs, motor, uh, motor boats, and things along that line. Everything is outdoor. You get to pick what you want. You can't do it all. All right. Uh, switch over to Guy Trebo. I want to ask Guy a little bit about uh, Update us on the website, Guy, because I know that... Uh, you're constantly uh, doing that, so tell us what uh, what's going on with the website. Well, uh, since Gene was just talking about these events, be sure to go to the events on the website. Yes. We've got uh, the dates and everything posted with links to um, to find out more information about all that stuff. And also we're getting ready to uh, – we try to keep up with Ron Wong as best we can. We, we don't know where he is now. He's, he's, he's everywhere. He's everywhere. He's visiting other Wongs. And but, then I'll get eight million videos from him at one Yeah, time. we will get For those. fourteen different events. That's right. He Maybe is uh, he is our man, and and poor guy is the guy that has to uh, keep up with Wong. But we do have uh, some Gaston, some media events up there. Ron has been over at the uh, Bassmaster Elite Series over at Lake Norfolk and Bull Shows. Going to have some of that. He's heading out somewhere this week. I can't remember where, but uh, he's he's everywhere. But uh, the website itself is now really easy to, and we get those shows up because uh, guy gets them. Greg Ratliff is the most thorough. Get the show to us as quick as he can. Yes, he does. And so we'll have the shows posted as soon as we can from Greg. Past shows, go to recent shows. We have all the past shows, and plus, I, now I've got it to where right there in the middle of the home page, you just click there, and you can get the most recent show. Yes. It just pops up in the window right there on the home page. So that's good, and um, we've got our link to fake Facebook now. Now the we have the, the link to the, uh, to, uh, to the LR uh, Outdoors Facebook, where you can click on that, like our page, or uh, if you don't want to click on it, let us know why you don't like the page. I don't know why you would not. I don't want to know that. <laughs> no, I do, though, because, you know, because we, we've won these awards and everything like that simply because of the work that Guy has done. So we, we want you to go to LROutdoors.com, uh, check out all the I, – I, I, I guarantee you there's more information on there than anywhere else that you'll find about what's going on in the Mid-South outdoors. And some good videos this time. Great videos. Uh, did we get that Cougar release video on yes, there? Yes, it's on there, and I, that, that thing scares me to death. <laughs> Those two guys releasing that Cougar that had been caught in a trap. Uh, Watch it, that video. That thing is it, that is amazing. From the Wyoming Department of Wildlife or something, and then those guys got that Cougar. You know, this is not no little bitty cat. Uh, and, and we've got that video and other unusual videos we try to post on there, right? That's right. If if there's an unusual video, if you want to send us pictures, we would love to have your photographs of turkeys you killed, uh, anything, big fish. We've got Tab Razbacks. For, and those two big shell crackers that he caught yeah. at Oracle Lake, buddy. I mean, they're, they're, they're a big, um, they're almost two-pound shell crackers. I mean, I, I know they're, they're big. Yeah. And so if you've got fish... Go to LROutdoors.com. Guy will get them on there for us or email them to me, LR Outdoor, uh, LR, I even forgot my web, you know. <laughs> what is it? Uh, LROutdoors.com. That's it. Okay. Guy Trebo, thank you. We're going to take a break right now. Guy's in the studio. Charlie, great poem. We're going to finish it up with a, what maybe I think is a, one of the most important things we need to do. We're going to talk about chronic waste disease that it's affected the deer herd 
and the elk herd in Arkansas, and it's scary, guys. And we're going to come back and talk to to Corey Gray. Uh, with the, he's the deer program coordinator for the state of Arkansas on Outdoors with Larry Ray. We'll be right back. You can find 